Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Photographer Academy and our Top Talk webinar. With tonight, we've got uh, Donna Gray, who's a, ba a baby specialist, a newborn specialist, in fact, uh, so uh, quite, quite special in its own kind of terms. And I recently had to photograph triplets, ident identical ones, so I, I don't know how you do it, Donna. Donna, welcome. Yes, hello. Yeah, I can't wait to see the triplets. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> We Thank did film it as well, so I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll get you to criticise them for me, okay? <laughs> I'm looking forward to, look, uh, to, to seeing the films. Um, and thank you very much for the critique on my panel. It was really, really useful. I would recommend anybody to submit in for it. Um, lots of useful um, pointers, pointing out not just the, the good things, but some of the weaker things, so that's good. Helps me move forward towards a next challenge. Really Brilliant. Useful. So, uh, in short, what are you going to be speaking about tonight? Hey, I'm going to really tell you a bit about how I started, really, because there are so much new many new mums coming into the industry um, to start newborn photography. Because, like myself, they might have found that they didn't have a newborn photography nearby them, um, and they might have just decided to start up themselves. Most of the newborn photographers I know are mums themselves. Uh, a bit of um, about the newborn photography experience and how we keep it calm and um, our first priority which is baby safety. Uh, newborn safety week in the US starts today um, and really started to highlight awareness of some of the silly images that we were seeing with babies dangles on branches and things where people that weren't as experienced would try and emulate these images. So. Um, by not using composites and things and using the post-production to do it. So it's really to highlight the safety aspect as well. Brilliant. So let me change your screen over to you and you can take charge. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I could just ask you to just um, lower in height your microphone, just below your mouth for me, please, just so we don't yeah. hear any of the rattle. Great. I'll, ch yeah. I'll change it across to you, Donna, so you should have your screen showing up. Okay. Second. Okay, here we are. Uh, you'll have to bear with me tonight. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so um, I'm not very experienced with um, uh, presentations, <laughs> but I shall try my best. Um, so I thought I'd tell you a, a little bit about myself and how I started. Um, this is a picture of me, which I was forced to get because uh, Photographer Academy asked for it, and this is uh, Julie Christie's amazing work. Um, I never hide the fact that I juggle the children in the business because it's one of the many reasons why people choose me. I think because if uh, you're speaking to a mum of six, I think there's a bit of a reassurance there that uh, your ma your baby might be safe with me. Did um, you say you're a mum of six? Yes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> How do you have time to run a, biz a biz business? Well, I'm a bit of a night bird. I'm, I'm uh, fueled by cups of tea late at night. <laughs> Very good. Um, how long have you been in the business for now? So it's about well, we're going into the fourth year. Um, been in business four years, four years now, and it's just getting busier and busier. Um, we had our birthday on the tenth of October. Um, we started from nothing really. There was no business plan or anything. I remember phoning HMRC from the car one day, and then coming off the phone and saying to my husband, uh, "I just started a business. I don't know what to do now." <laughs> um, but it's just grown and blossomed uh, down to recommendation, really. Um, and so, and so, before you began the business, what uh, what kind of photography experience did you have? Any? No, hardly anything. Just um, brought to an interest, really, from having my own children. Um, I did an open university course in the basics, with the thought that if I pass well, then that's great. Um, at the very worst, they'll be able to take better images of my own children, you know. And then after I'd done that, I got requests from people to take pictures of their children. So in the very beginning, I, did, I took photographs of everything. Um, darts, players, press photography, any, uh, older children, anything I got offered just to get money to get started. Um, and photographer training for you. Um, which it was then, the, the Photographer Training Academy, was a central part of that because being able to go on and watch any video about any um, any genre of photography and 
so that you could go and be faced with anything completely unfazed because you had um, watched these films was great. Um, so really thankful that it was there because I couldn't have done a full time for, you know photography course at college or anything. It just wouldn't fit around my life just now. Very nice for you to say. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, guys. Um, just having a lot of feedback. Donna is people are saying very quiet, so I might need to ask it just to bring that mic up a little bit higher. Appreciate we're in different buildings here, guys. So there is going to be a slight volume difference between Mark and Donna. Okay, is that better? That's fantastic. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, well, there's a first time for anything. <laughs> okay. Um, so, anything else you want to share uh, share about yourself? Uh, no, not really. Um, I always look for another challenge. So um, now that I've done the craftsmanship, I was I was thrilled with that. Um, just look for the next challenge because I never feel that you know everything. I'm always going to commit to train um, to do more because. You can always get better. There's always room for improvement. I'm, a, I'm my own worst critique. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So. Good. I, I, I agree with that as well. So um, how, how did you specifically get into babies? I mean, because obviously it's a big trend going on at present and so on throughout the UK and the world. Um, how did it all start off for you? For me, it was um, when I had my own children. Um, when you think back 10 years ago about what we what we had. My first child, I got a voucher in, in my bounty pack to go and get some photographs done and I just thought, oh, you know, that's it. Um, so we went to this baby supermarket, if you like, and naming no names, and we queued for our five, ten minute slot. The, my baby by that time was hot and blotchy and um, he was upset because we were in a noisy shop with the shop announcements and onlookers and the eventual photographs that we ended up with, you know, I still treasure because it's my baby, but he'd stay the squinty eyes, there were no details, I didn't get his feet, you know, the tiny wee feet, all these wee details that you want to keep. Um, the backdrop was a piece of, sort of dusty silk with um, some fake sunflowers beside it. It was just just not the way I wanted to remember my baby. Um, so what I wanted was... Um, to have images that showed some expression, because when you're sitting at two or three in the morning feeding them and everything, you see all this, but you need it, you want it captured so that you can keep it. Um, I wanted to show scale and proportion and some expression, and for the images to evoke the feelings I had, you know, the love and emotion I was feeling at that time. Um, I wanted them to include personal belongings, um, heirlooms, teddies, um, and things. And I think from a personal point, a business point of view, um, it makes sense to photograph babies. You know, if you already do weddings, then this is the next step, isn't it? You're going to get the business from, from newborns. Um, you're going to get repeat business, siblings, baby packages, first year packages. And I think you put, commented in my, in my panel, you know, you have a business plan more or less for 20 years <laughs> as you follow them through life. Um, there's lots of disposable income at that time as well because you've got two cents, ten sets of grandparents um, and, and parents prepared to pay for the best for their baby. Um, and there's also this growing trend of uh, baby showers, which I, I never went into that, but in push presents, I believe uh, Her Royal Highness um, the Princess uh, got a present from William called a push present. So. These are some of the things that I hear mentioned from people book sessions now. It's uh, It's been a big help, I suppose, with the uh, princess giving birth. <laughs> it's brought a whole new kind of awareness to baby photography again, no? Yeah. It's, um, I think they got a lot of uh, flack for their first baby image, didn't they? But it's, yeah. That's what I mean. You know, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece, does it? It's, it means something to, to them. You know, it's personal to them. How do you make yeah, it personal for a client? Um, well, with this image that I'm showing now, with the baby in um, in the drawers, it's a, I don't know if it's a tradition in England, but it's a tradition, or was way back the centuries, that you kept all your, your trousseau in your bottom drawer. So this baby was photographed in the bottom drawer of these drawers with our mum's wedding veil, her garter, and her, that isn't actually her tiara because she'd forgotten to bring it. 
but um, we put a tiara on there as well, just to represent a, a red and Indian. And moving on, so it was just a very personal image for her. Um, and are these images that you kind of see else elsewhere, and you kind of kind of think, oh, I'm going to be doing that, or is it inspired by the client? How does it all come together as a kind of a con a concept? Sometimes people will come to me with things, um, you know. Lately, there have been a run of guitars and things like that. And I think, you know, we do grow, grasp inspiration from around about what we see, you know, with Pinterest and, and all these different things now, and looking at other people's work. But I think there's always a way that you can make it your own. You don't have to copy something completely. Um, and I'm making this particular image, you know, I've made for that client. You know, we've personalized it with her belongings in it. Um, and I think people want to, to hire someone who specialises. You know, you want you don't necessarily want a jack of all trades for something like this because it's really special. And it's and there's a bit more to it than just the camera skills, but the settling the baby and getting them in position and being trusted with, with something that's so precious to them as well, you know. Hmm. What's the um, what's the biggest concern for you when you're going into a session as such? Do you have any real worries? You know this, I think this is, going into a session is probably the calmest I ever am, you know, <laughs> in the course of a day, hand me a newborn and I'm calm, <laughs> um, I just, they don't phase me at all really, you know, I will, I'm quite prepared to wait, I don't have a time limit on my session, so I'm quite prepared to wait till we get those images or, and work towards them, um, it really doesn't, doesn't phase me at all. Um, in the beginning, it was the technical side of things. I think um, knowing that you're not going to do it all perfectly in that first shoot, you know. Um, but photo training for you again was good there because I could log on sort of just as my client was, you know, ten minutes before they were arriving, just to refresh <laughs> my uh, thoughts on where my lights would go and what I would do. I don't do that now. <laughs> I feel, feel a bit more confident now. Good. So who uh, books the sessions? Is it mums, dads, or grandparents, or what? Um, I get equal measure of mums and dads. I find dads hear about me through their workplaces, uh, and Facebook is an amazing marketing tool. Uh, some grannies, although less of that. I would rather the mums and dads book me themselves. I, I have done gift vouchers in the past, but I would rather they booked me themselves and chose me out because it is a personal thing. Um, but the dads are quite funny, you have to laugh at them, they come in all sheepish, you know, like they're not really that into it. And then you, you have images like this where the dad requested, he was just so proud of his daughter that he wanted an image to show the scale of how small she was. Um, and the dads come in, sometimes they're not that keen. And they go out sort of asking for more and telling me that they're going to buy the whole package and you know when can we get when can we get the images they just want that usb in their hand and can they upgrade to a larger size <laughs> canvas and things so um, we never remember how tiny they are so these sort of images are really precious i think this image is uh, I, I i mentioned it when i did your critique and things i think it's just a timeless image and it's it's an image just that is is a brand a branding by itself i think um it's one of those art the art factors and i think the you look at it and it could be in an art gallery it's just not a photographer taking a photograph of a baby with a dad's hands for me this is kind of bridging that gap between the world of photography and the world of art that it is oh, wow, such a you. <laughs> no it really is it's such a and i don't say that a lot to be honest, uh, be honest. um it, it has a beautiful element to it and things really and uh, i think it's this emotion that i kind of saw going through all all of your images we'll get to have a look at a load yeah. more photographs now in a minute kind of thing with it you know but i think it's just absolutely outstanding so how uh, do you make all these babies smile then well, some of them do their, their own stunts. <laughs> There's nothing I, I can make them, um, I can't make them smile. But um, like this image, we had it all set up. And I, what I was working on was keeping her, trying to get her hand flat and perfect. Because they tense up and they have this palmer grasp reflex where they'll, they, they have little fists. So we were working on getting her hand um, just nice and flat. So it should look like she was giving her dad five, you know. Um, 
and then we got this huge smile because she was in a state of, of REM sleep prayer that you can see their eyes dancing under their eyelids and the twitch and everything and that's usually when they're dreaming. In a, in a similar state of sleep to me would be when you're just dropping off into a deep sleep and you, you jolt, you know, that's usually when you get the smiles. And there are ones like these where this is probably never land in an art gallery, it's not a masterpiece, but this is a tiny little boy, he was uh, a bit premature and um, it just all worked together. The, the parents loved this image. It was one of the first they picked out. Um, it's not my strongest image, but it's certainly one that evoked emotion in them. Um, and again, with something like this, um, it was photographed. We had shot this um, from above, because you can get so many different, you know, variety from one image, from one setup. Um, and then we'd moved on to show him, because he looked so relaxed with his hand under his chin there, and he's got um, mum's wedding ring in his hand as well. But creating the awe factor, I think, is just down to waiting. So we came up with this little um, acronym, which was always wait, it'll happen eventually. It's worth the wait to get images like that, I think, and they are some of the best sellers. Who wouldn't buy an image with a smile like that on a baby? Um, this wasn't a smile, this was a laugh. <laughs> um, I think this is, this, we're really lucky with this one. This is the first, very first image on the camera, on his session. The minute I laid him down, he gave me this huge smile. So um, you can't panic when you're faced with that. It can only calm you down. Is it me, or do, ba uh, do babies look strange when they've got their eyes open, <laughs> when they're newborn? <laughs> it, it almost kind of, you want them to have their eyes closed. You, you, you want them to be kind of comforted and kind of relaxed and kind of warm, and, and they're, they're kind of into their own little world, whereas when their eyes are open, I think they can stare a little bit. Uh, do you get the same thing, or is it just me? Yeah, when they're um, awake, I find I have to be a machine gun photographer. I have to fire off so many um, pictures because they're squirmy, cause, uh, so you have to watch your focus and things. And they also have this really scary thing where they roll their eyes into the back of their head. So um, I have lots of outtakes because I, you know you want to catch them looking at the camera in those really wide, wide eyes. Because yeah, we do, I do do awake shots in a session as well because I, I don't like to stop taking pictures unless baby's soothing, feeding, um, or just having a cuddle with mum and I'm preparing props or padding them out or whatever. I like to keep it flowing because if you don't, parents tend to think, oh, nothing's happening. You know, I'm not, oh, I'm not going to get pictures of my baby. You know, she's not behaving herself. Um, but if you just calm down and, and chill out and say, you know, that's fine, have a cuddle or whatever, we'll wait. Or, well, while she's settling, we'll take pictures of her feet, we'll do details shots, um, we'll take pictures of details like hair and macro shots of toes and things like that. You can do all those even though they're awake, you know. Um, can you explain the setup of this, uh, of this photograph that we're looking at here at all? As far as what they're lying uh, on? Or? The awe factor, um, he is just lying on the beanbag. He's actually, I've tilted the camera to to get the smile this way up. Um, he was just laying on the beanbag. Uh, I always start usually with babies wrapped up, but he, when we undressed him, he was still quite sleepy, but he was drifting in and out of sleep. So we laid him on the beanbag um, on, in the prone position, which is just basically on their tummy where they're less likely to startle, um, and he gave us this huge smile. So I've got a, a massive beanbag which came from Tracy Marie uh, photo props or perfect picture props, um, who I believe has donated a prize for the giveaway. Um, I, she's custom made me a beanbag which is very, very big and it's oval so that I don't have blank, you know, wrinkles and blankets and things. Um, and I have them right in the middle of it, so it's safer as well. They're not going to sort of tip off the edge of a tiny little bean bag. So he's on that with the blankets over it as the backdrop. And are you a natural light photographer or a flash photographer? Flash. Uh, I decided really early on that um, I wanted to be studio-based um, 
because having had a photographer come to my house when I had my fourth baby, I realised the panic it ensued, you know, the, uh, the chaos of having a baby to start with in the untidy house and not long after she had arrived we got unexpected visitors and which sort of interrupted our session a bit um, and it was all quite an awkward situation. So I wanted to create somewhere where mums could come and they could have their babies in a peaceful environment and escape just for a you know, a few hours, just them and their partner and their baby, because it's such a busy time after you have your baby that it's nice to escape. And dads are on such a short paternity leave as well, um, that it's it's a nice experience. It's a, a chance to escape together. And I think the atmosphere in the studio is quite magical. You know, um, in, when, it, when you get it right and things like this picture happen, the parents are just in complete awe of what you can do with a sleeping baby, you know. Um, and and do you show do you show them the images on the back of the camera and things, or do you shoot to a laptop or anything, or what do you do? Uh, I will show them on the back of the camera because at the end of the session, um, I always check with them that um, we have everything that they want to capture. You know, are you happy with the selection of pictures that we have? Is there anything else that I can get for you? You know, but there'll always be a, a sort of natural end to the session where the baby will decide. You know, I've had enough. Um, because I always, that's another thing about preparing the parents. I think is to say to them, you know, expect to be, you know, four hours. You know, it might take longer. It never usually does. Um, but you have to prepare them for that because otherwise, you know, I have had one instance where I thought this lady hasn't read the session guide where she arrived and they were there for about 20 minutes and they said, you know, what time will we be finishing up because my daughter's got a dancing lesson, you know, um, and I thought that was my mistake because I haven't prepared her properly, you know. She had the session guide, she had mm. all that, but she hadn't, hadn't had the time to read it or hadn't read it before the session. So, so it's tell worth us, reminding them. <laughs> yeah, tell us about your pose then. Um, so I've got a, a little uh, thing made up here to help you keep them asleep um, and to help you soothe them. I came up with this little uh, acronym, which is preparation and patience. So have everything to hand, wipes, wraps, accessories, bed mats, etc. I use these big bed mats, which you can get from the chemist, which I put between the layers of blankets and things, so that if you do soil one layer of blanket, you can flip it over, and the next layer is still absolutely fine. And these are throw away, so there's no washing with them. And I also hand them to parents when I hand them their unnappied baby, so that they don't get clothes and things soiled as well. I think I'm immune to, to poop now. <laughs> I've seen so much of it, it just doesn't faze me at all. But uh, parents are quite new to it, especially first time parents. So preparation before you start to pose. Having patience is key. Um, waiting, and if things aren't going well, you need to slow down and check the temperature of the room, check the environment that you've created, check to see if baby's hungry, um, you, there are cues um, that you can look out for. Um, when I had my children, I read quite a lot of books to sort of calm parenting down a bit because it was so much chaos. I, I was determined it couldn't be this much chaos. It didn't have to be like that. So there are books I'll recommend at the end, but one of them was The Baby Whisperer by Tracy Hogg, and she speaks about the stages of sleep and routines for sleep and how you look for baby cues to let you know when baby is hungry or tired. Um, so I think I use that within the sessions. Um, they may just need a break or a cuddle, um, or you might be trying to get a baby out to sleep that is just awake. You know, they have, I think babies sleep for about 16 hours in a day, um, and most of that is daytime. Um, and they're Awake spells rarely last, I shoot within the first 10 days, so we're talking about the first um, 10 days here, between 45 minutes and an hour that they will last a week. By 45 minutes, they are looking to get sleepy, and you can spot blinking eyes, they'll start to yawn just like we would ourselves, um, 
or they may start to jolt and get fidgety, uh, and that's when I wrap them up and uh, swaddle them to soothe them. So this all comes under observation. Look for the cues, yawning, get twitching, like I've um, already mentioned. Uh, soothing them, when you do spot the sleep cues, it's time to soothe them. So I also read a book called The Happiest Baby on the Block by Dr. Harvey Car Carp. And they speak about the five S's, which is swaddling, shushing, swinging, suckling, and placing them on their side, which all these things induce calming reflexes in babies so that um, you can have calm instead of chaos. Um, obviously, we can't go into everything tonight because it would just take forever. And it's easier to show people than it is to, to speak about it. Exhaust the possibilities of every pose that you do. Um, so for example, I would always start with a prone position. Um, I'm just checking this. Before uh, before we get to um, some questions and things, really, the <clears throat> you talk you talked about the temperature in a room. Is there a magic temperature uh -huh. to be photographing in? Uh, uh, at the end of the slides there as well, you'll see um, when we get to the end. I've mentioned the Lullaby Trust. Um, I've mentioned them because obviously we all get the information about. Um, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, SIDS as it's known. So I always discuss with parents at the start of the session the temperature I'm going to be working in because I want them to reassure them that the reason that we're working in that temperature is because we're dealing with a naked baby. The temperature recommended by health professionals is usually around 18 degrees. The baby would have on a vest, sleep suit, jumper, you know, cardigan or whatever. We're compensating for all those layers of clothing. So generally, I, I try to work at about 26 or 27 degrees, but I, it is always dependent on each individual baby. I look for things like dewy feet, um, dewy palms or hands, back of the neck, and if baby gets rapid breathing, a very red face, or starts to sweat, then it is too hot. You need to get rid of heat. There is no way they need to be that um, warm. So gen generally about 27 degrees or so, but I'll, I'll cover um, temperature and things in the safety safety section. Okay, as well. great, thank thank you. So um, you you mentioned the prone position. Is that what we're looking at now, or can you explain yeah. it a little bit? So I was saying about getting variety. So this is prone position. Basically, baby's on his tummy. It's it induces the same feeling as if they were swaddled because their hands and arms are tucked underneath their body, so they can't startle. This is, if there was one position to learn in the beginning, this is the one to start off with. Um, not necessarily, and I'm not saying go put them in a suitcase straight away. Keep it simple. Start on a bean bag. Start with baby on their side. Gently lift them onto their um, front sort of support in their head. Like I say, it's easier to show than it is to tell, but um, or up onto their knees, arrange their feet and things. And then you can get so much variety from that just on the bean bag. Um, you can get profiles, um, side, um, half body, full body, the details of their little toes, profiles of their, their nose, their hair. You can get so much from that and then you can add, add in accessories. Um, I do this one, that's another one, but again that's more advanced. And as we go through the slides, I'll show you the one that we had earlier on where it said, um, from small beginnings come great things, where baby's on dad's arm. Again, that's a prone position. That's a transition from baby being on the bean bag <laughs> um, laid down. How do you get your work? Uh, I mean, you know, um, how do you get the people to book you? Uh, do you advertise much and things, or what do you do? Uh, I don't advertise at all really to be quite honest which um, is probably uh, not very good at being a businesswoman but I, I find I don't need to I have you know enough work at the moment um, more than enough <laughs> I hate turning people away but my work comes through recommendation so not so much not just the the images themselves but that's what people bring you know take people to me but people telling other people about the experience itself. 
um, and I also mark it for babies who are under 10 days. That's my preference. You can pose babies um, later than that, but I find that it's safer, more appropriate, and easier if they're under 10 days, unless they've been premature or they've been in special care for any reason. You know, I wouldn't turn a premature baby away. We would um, try and get whatever we could. And making, creating the experience, I think, is what brings people to me. Um, they may forget what you said, they may forget what you did, but they never forget how you made them feel, and I think that's quite appropriate for newborn photography. These are some of the, you know, how do I make my clients feel, and what did I read into that? Um, you made what I thought would be a slightly stressful situation into a completely enjoyable one. So I think that comes from preparing them, um, from keeping them calm and managing their expectations, um, and not expecting the parents to do anything. You know, I soothe them, clean them. You know. I'll, I'll do anything. I always ask if it's okay to do anything in the nappy department. You know, is it okay if I clean them up? You know, um, and try to make them feel pampered. You know, mum should feel like a queen for a day. She's just produced another person. What a brilliant achievement! Um, it's a magical afternoon. So I must be getting something right when babies are in awe of what you do, um, and it's only once in a lifetime. So I think they appreciate um, what you've done for them. Uh, I must be getting this right if I'm getting um, comments like this. I've evoked emotion in the pictures, which is exactly what I set out to do. You're a baby whisperer and you touch him and he sleeps. I'm working confidently. That you know, you can only get comments like that if you're working confidently. And and there, when you handed them to them, he wasn't sleeping. When it was handed back to me. I could, I had the ability to soothe them back to sleep. So it isn't a magic, a magic spell. It's just knowing your subject. Um, we love our photographs, and we've not even seen them yet. <coughs> I'm selling them, um, which has allowed me to to move the business forward and up, do my upgrades and things. Most people decide they're buy, buying the lot of the photographs before they've even left the session. You know, my most popular product is the USB of all the pictures, which is my highest priced product. And they usually decide they've bought, you know, they're buying it before they before they leave. Um, and 100%, so I did, I did a client survey recently just to help me gauge how I was doing with my clients, point from a client's point of view, and how I would move the business forward. And 100% of clients said they felt relaxed and comfortable and their baby was handled safely and respectfully at all times. Uh, you mentioned about calm and you know an yep. enjoyable experience. Can you explain about that kind of calm element? Oh, and yep. there comes a slide. <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, there's a slight delay in the slide here which is confusing me a bit. Um, how do we make it calm? So again, this is me trying to organize my presentation. I'm, I'm not a teacher, so it was all quite new to me to be thrown in at the deep end to ask to be done to do this, as much as it was very nice to be asked. But um, So this is what I do. I create a suitable environment, and I work with confidence and calmly. We've, we've covered a lot of this already, just um, as we've gone along. But it's reassuring to both the baby and the parents, reassuring to the baby because if you're stressed out, the baby's going to be just exactly the same. And if you're stressed, you're of no reassurance to those brand new parents who are already sleep deprived and are panicking just about getting to the session, never mind what they're going to do once they get there. Um, again, all about knowing your subject and knowing your customer and knowing their needs as well. Um, my little saying to myself when my very first shoot was always behave like a duck, remain calm and unruffled on the surface, but pedal like heck underneath, or paddle like heck underneath. Um, work within your ability. So in the beginning, like I said earlier, you would use the prone position, um, because that's going to be your easiest one to master in the beginning. And there's no reason why you can't stick to that and master it first before you try and do anything else. But you will find as you relax and you get a nice, relaxed, calm baby, 
that you'll be able to manipulate them into other little positions, transitioning from that quite easily once you, you feel more confident. And there are so many angles and things that you can get from that one position, plus um, adding the accessories. You kind of need to be a bit of a master of ceremonies as well um, and take charge. Because I remember what I was like as a first time parent, I had no confidence handling them, you know, um, because they're so wobbly in the beginning and they're so tiny. Keep the baby the focus of the images as well, so um, that goes under your ability, you know, keep, if you keep the baby the focus and add the accessories to complement them or, or um, garnish them if you like, you know, just don't overpower them with accessories, but just add enough to to complement the baby. The love and emotion, like we've covered earlier, as long as the images evoke emotion, then props and advanced posing can come later. Babies should look relaxed and comfortable. There is no point in putting a baby into something. If they're uncomfortable, they're going to look uncomfortable, and that's not going to be a comfortable image to look at. Um, and it's not going to be very sellable. I hate seeing pictures of, of crying babies and and things because I, I just don't see um, the need for it. Um, you can get expressions um, as well, and like we mentioned earlier, including things that are meaningful to the parents. Jewelry. Um, I recently posed the, the twins that you seen in the nest um, recently with Grandma's ring and Granddad's Rolex, and this was a request. It's a, an image that will never win a contest. But it's already sold to them because it's they wanted an image with those possessions in beside their grandchildren. Do you uh, do you keep mum in the room, mum and dad in the room, or do you work alone? Uh, I never work alone. Um, I'll come to that when again under safety and things, keeping ourselves safe. Um, and I don't see the need, I never exclude mum. I would have hated to have been excluded from my baby, especially at such a special time. Um, when I work, um, my the seating for my parents is less than half a metre from the bean bag. They are right there, right beside them, and they are closer if I have them spotting. I always say to them that, you know, the minute I pick up the camera, I can't be there to grab baby, so you stay as close as you possibly can. Don't take your eyes off that baby. At the beginning of the session, I go through some tick boxes on my um, uh, client contract. Um, is baby fit and well to be photographed? Um, I go over baby spotting with them, and I show them my composite shots, and I show them how we're going to achieve them, and that baby's always supported. Um, I ask them, I go over the temperature of the room with them and I also double check that they are okay for me to use the photographs on Facebook or any other social media. Although they might be fine with them on my website, they might not want them on social media. And um, how, how do you ensure you're going to get the right variety of photographs? You know, the different, because it's minimal posing with a baby, isn't it? So you need to actually maximize exactly what you can get. How yeah. uh, do you kind of pretty yeah. much guarantee you can get it done? Uh, I always start with wrapped shots. So this one is of baby Colby. He, wrapping them is a good starting point because you're, usually when you take off their clothes to start with, you might experience that they get upset. So wrapping them up, I always ask what point they are, you know, what stage are we at with feed, feeding? When did you last feed? Um, and then gauge from that, you know, how long we've got or how sleepy he is. I'll start by wrapping them up. Um, and then we'll move to, um, again, this position. So we'll slowly unwrap and get them into prone position. And then you can get the variety with the hat, without the hat, maybe with teddies round about them or any personal belongings, close-ups, profiles, that sort of thing. Um, and you can always tell with an image, you'll see, you know with this image that his hand is is really smooth and flat underneath his cheek there. We can see all his face and we can see all his little toes. And those are the, the little perfections that as you get more confident, you can start to check those things and make sure so that when you get your image at the end, you're, you're happier with it. It's the devil's in the detail. <laughs> and are you working high up or are you working on the floor? I'm always on the floor. Um, 
and they're on the beanbag, which is just sort of kneeling height to me. Um, I, that's that's where I work. Again, this is prone position, so all I've done here is tilted the camera because I wanted to make a, a, sort of a post box, like a panoramic sort of shot from this. Um, so the space was left on the right hand side originally because the, the family had a quote that they wanted um, put on there. Um, but again, that's prone position, but we've added a, a, a headband, which is from Verity Isabella. And I think this is the same one, actually, as she's given away in the, in the giveaway, but she's given away the little matching bracelet as well. <coughs> and again, that's, we've already seen this one, but that's in the case again. Same position, but so much variety. So when, when you get a lot more confident, you can scoop them up from that beanbag and compensate for the heat that they lose from underneath them when you do it. Because the beans in the beanbag generate heat too, so when you scoop them up, they're going to get a draft underneath them. Um, I have heard people using uh, heat pads, like the little mini electric blankets. These are great for warming up just the surface, just very, very gently. To, you know, before you put them in the case, you would have had that sitting there already to move them from the beanbag, but you would have warmed it up a little so that you didn't startle when you when you placed them into it. So this is prone position again, but we've transitioned her um, onto Dad's arm. So she was um, at the bottom of the picture on the beanbag, and then I asked Dad to slip his hand in front of her and arrange her leg and her arms over, and then he just lifts up. He just lifts up far enough that her, her hand is just brushing the edge of the beanbag, so that it looks like she's, you know, we can make her look like she's higher up in post-production, but she's always been safe. And again, this is my Lightroom shot from the twin session, the same one with the nest. And we've got a series of the, these image, images with each baby. Um, and on the black background, it also means that I can put those in, you know, on one canvas if I want. You know, I can merge them together so babies are side by side. So they might buy individual shots. Some relatives might buy the image with both of them on them. But the more variety I give them, the more difficult it is for them to choose. When they can't choose, they buy them all. <laughs> well, that's why I find it. <laughs> Good. So you mentioned about um, baby safe, uh, baby safety quite a lot. Can you talk? Can you talk us through that? Yeah. Uh, this image is a really good example of that. Again, note that she's in a, in a prone position. She's on her tummy. We've scooped her up from the beanbag and placed her in there. But this is how we got the shot. Um, I would never place a baby in any of the props, or particularly you will have seen um, images of the beds and uh, the Tonka truck, for example, um, the bunk beds in particular you'll see later on. All those, always, uh, someone has either had their hand on baby or just above baby for the 125th of a second that I took that picture, that lady's hand just moved enough so that I could, you know, surround that with the content of air tool and, and take her out of the picture. Um, so the prop I set up when baby's feeding and it's all padded and weighted out. Any props like this that can move, the wheels are jammed, you know, you can wind wool round the, the axle so that the wheels just don't move or weight the fields and then edit out um, and composite the weights that you had there. Um, you have to, to counterbalance the prop, obviously, for the weight of the baby. So I'm, I use these wrist weights and just pile them in the bottom there. And I also test all my props. Um, I have a prop log where um, my glamorous assistants of children have numbered all my props for me. Um, because there are so many now, and every time I take it out, I will log that I've given it another visual inspection that it doesn't have any splinters and things like that, um, anything loose or bolts come out or anything, so that um, I can reassure myself as well that and cover myself that everything is safe. Um, so that's that one. But our first priority is obviously baby safety. Um, in props and posing, 
like we've just discussed. <coughs> um, protecting ourselves, um, insurance is essential, obviously. Um, I also have a CRB disclosure check. I'm not sure if the name of that has changed now, but basically it, it, it can reassure parents that I don't have a criminal record. I've not done anything nasty to anybody. Um, I was reading recently, I don't know if you've seen it, Mark, in, in Professional Photographer magazine, there was an instance where a boudoir client had been, um, a photographer had been taken to court by their boudoir client who they knew quite well. Um, and had known for many years, but it was a perfect example for me of why I don't leave myself in, don't put myself in that situation where I'm left alone with the baby. You know, I would always have the parents there. Uh, I also had advice from the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre um, regarding um, copyright, not only watermarking for copyright, but watermarking to save any suspicious or malicious use of any of these images of, of naked babies, because obviously we want to reassure parents. And if you're having images, when you sell them the USB, if they're putting the, the non-watermarked images on Facebook, your first concern might be that you know your images are going to get stolen from there, but mine would be that if they're stolen, you don't know who they're stolen by, and they're not traceable. So CEOP's advice was to watermark so that it's a deterrent for any malicious activity. And if you do have malicious activity, that's the people to report them to. I'll give their uh, link at the end. Um, take off jewellery and things like that. Don't have your camera strap um, dangling around your neck if, if they're posed in a bucket and it's going to swing against them. Um, but put it around your neck if you're going up on any sort of step ladder um, at all. Uh, like we've already covered, um, I I've realised we're sort of getting, um, moving on in time here, but uh, counterbalance props with weights, jam wheels to fix them permanently. A lot of this is common sense, but I've seen some really scary images and that was the reason that Newborn Safety Week was started because people were putting babies in glass jars and um, dangling them from, from sticks and things and not everyone was aware that these were done as a composite shot. Um, siblings work, watch out for babies startling. This is not going to be a definitive list because I'm going to go through the main points here to speed up a little. Um, and not all babies will achieve all poses. Um, I always manage my client's expectations by telling them Give me a wish list, tell me what your priorities are, and I will work towards that, but we may not get all the shots. Um, be aware of their reflexes. The more aware you are of their reflexes, the more confident and a safer photo newborn photographer you'll be. Um, hygiene, use alcohol ha hand gel during your session, because obviously you're touching baby's bottom, and then you might be touching baby's face, so constantly use hand gel. And one thing that I know I've heard of some newborn baby uh, photographers doing is kissing their clients' babies. <clears throat> but there, there is information on the NHS website regarding the herpes simplex virus, which is the cold sore virus. Um, it can be fatal to babies, so I would never touch, uh, I'd, I would never kiss a client's baby. I, I wouldn't see that as appropriate anyway, but I, I wouldn't do that. And it, Again, you would have to be very wary, you know, of hand gelling your your fingernails and your um, hands. Sound is another one that people might not be quite so aware of. Um, America have guidelines um, for, you know, the pediatricians have guidelines for safe sound uh, for children, safe sound levels. Um, we don't have guidelines, but I approached the British Association of Pediatricians in Audiology, and they, they admitted that there are no guidelines, but um, if you were playing um, anything for a prolonged period of time, and we can be in a newborn session for four hours, um, that general speech is around 60 to 65 decibels, and louder sounds would be about 80 decibels. Um, so I have a sound meter in the studio and I always measure the sound so that I can reassure myself and the parents that and, you know, the white noise and things that we're playing um, 
is never too loud. If you put the iPhone right by a baby's ear, you'll find that sometimes the sound can reach as much as 90 decibels or over. Um, whereas if you put it on a dock away from the baby, you know, you have a much um, safer uh, limit. And you also need to be aware of notifications coming in, so I would always put on ear, airplane mode because parents can be concerned about the radiation coming from phones as well. This is um, a big one, overheating and heat loss, uh, probably the biggest one. The Lullaby Trust, like I mentioned earlier, will send you, um, if you pay the postage, uh, they will send you um, postcards which you can give to parents to make sure they know the safe sleeping arrangements because they may think that you've soothed their baby. Donna, much. sorry to cut in there, but your sound has gone very low. Could you just kind of just raise your microphone wherever it was to? Uh, it, it changed quite drastically a second ago. Okay, you got me there? Better, thank you. Okay. Um, overheating, yeah, again, um, check for the signs of overheating. I think this is, you know, there is so much detail I could go into here, but we just don't have the time. Um, smaller babies will lose heat quick, more quickly, but be guided by every single baby. And if the parents aren't happy with the temperature, you know, you have no option. You know, you have to be guided by them. It's their baby. But you're always compensating um, for the heat they're losing when you unwrap them and things like that. Um, and looking for the shots of overheating, which can also be fatal. Um, Shots with siblings, again, be mindful of them um, startling the baby, manage their expectations. I never promise that we'll get the, the sibling shot, but I say that we'll, you know, we'll try our best, and I never put pressure on the sibling. As far as safety goes, I would keep low to the floor, and I always try a wrapped shot right at the beginning of the session so the sibling can leave. Um, I give them play vouchers for the local play centre so that the the, anyone else coming with them can take the sibling away for some fun um, whilst we get on to posing the, the baby. It's okay to say no as well, good old fashioned common sense, you know, never leaving baby unattended. Before I step away from the bean bag or step away from the props, you know, even though parents are have already been told this spot, I always make them responsible. So I always say, will you please mind baby whilst I go get something. And because they can be complacent as well, uh, they don't always realise, you know, they're so soundly sleeping that they don't realise that they're going to move, but they can leapfrog themselves forward quite quickly um, because they have strong little limbs. So these are some of Donna, could I cut in for a second, just for one sec yeah, second? I, I just don't want you to rush, as long as you're okay for time. We're obviously at the 8, uh, eight o'clock kind of knock-off time, um, but we're, we're yeah. going to continue recording if everybody's okay. We're, we're going to still be live, and we'll try and get okay. to all your questions as well. So as long as you're okay with that, Donna, yeah. we're, we're okay to keep going if that's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, just be aware, obviously, I haven't... Um, covered all the safety issues here, but I think the most important ones are the composite shot um, and the overheating, that sort of thing. So this this is an image that's been quite well seen now on all the on all the promotions. But this is how it was created. Um, I instruct, like I was saying earlier on, you instruct and include and involve the parents in the session. They were part of making this image, so. I uh, get the baby in position initially, and then I'll instruct the mum to that she needs to take the weight of baby's head. Baby isn't left with their head on their hands at any point. Um, so she takes she, she takes place of where my hands were in that top left photograph there, and then I tell her that I'll stand back and I need to keep my position. I'll take one shot where she removes the top hand, and he was very steadily posed here, and she moved her hand up the way, so she's immediately just above him there, and can pop it back down if anything moves at all. And then she removes the bottom hand, and we blend all these together in post-production <coughs> to get the, the resulting shot. And this one shows it sort of more in place, how it works. Um, in that one, 
the, the slide back there, you'll notice that his feet are beside his elbows. This is like the froggy position. Um, but not all babies will go into that position, so I would never ever force it, and particularly if they've been um, breech babies. You need to be aware of maybe problems with their hips and things. And that's another reason why I ask if babies fit in well. You know, in case there are maybe hernias or problems with their hips or any other reason why we should do things a little bit different and adapt things in that session for that baby. Here with twins, I always have two spotters. Um, and again, this is granddad on the right and dad is uh, above. And they've just moved their hands out of, out of the frame just a little bit for the 125th of a second that the, the camera's taken to take the picture. The Tonka truck, um, content aware tool is a, a marvelous thing. Um, again, this is not one that I would attempt until I was completely um, confident. The wheels on the truck truck are jammed, we've wrapped wool around them to stiffen them, the weights, there are weights in the back of the truck and the tipping mechanism of the truck is permanently fixed down um, and the rough edges where you know there might be rusty metal edges are all taped with insulation tape so that there's no sharp edges at all. And then <coughs> this is uh, a sling image. Normally, um, I would always have dad's hand right underneath baby as well. But the way this particular baby uh, settled and was very, very well balanced in the sling, um, it, he removed his hand himself actually um, without being, being told. But uh, we transitioned it again from the prone position into this. Um, this is, you know, far more advanced pose and not one that you would attempt on, on your first session. Uh, Dad's hand is in the knot above as well, so that he's always holding um, the weight. And the material that she's in has been hung up and tested to make sure that it'll bear the weight um, of a very, very heavy baby, <laughs> of always overcompensating. Um, to get this shot. So I think that kind of takes us to questions and answers. So some recommendations. Uh, so the Lullaby Trust is um, the place to go for little information leaflets. It can't do any harm to give uh, parents a little um, leaflet. This shows that you care um, and that you're informed and you know, just letting them know that although their baby peacefully slept on their tummy during their, their photography session, that they shouldn't be placed, you know, in their tummy to, to sleep in the normal circumstances. Um, this Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre, the link's there. Perfect picture props, big, big shout out for Tracy today. I approached her to see if she would give me a... Um, prize for our giveaway and she gave us a marvellous prize of the baby swing. Um, again, please don't anybody go out and use that without making a composite shot and don't try it on your first session, um, but it's a marvellous prize so I'm looking forward to see who wins that. Uh, big muslins, uh, I mentioned I think earlier on about swaddling babies, I have hundreds, <laughs> not, not hundreds, but I have lots and lots of these in the studio. And these are what I hand um, baby to parents in and what I swaddle baby in. Um, and we've got a pack of them to give away as well, I think. Oh. Sorry about that. That's, uh, that's terrific. Carry on. Yeah, shall I... Um, so have you got any other slides to show there? I think Jay's been paste, uh, pasting across all the links and everything else with it. Jay, do you want us, uh, before we kind of go on to the quest, uh, questions, do you want to tell us what, what we're going to be doing as far as the, com the competitions are concerned, mate? 
Uh, yeah, sure. We're going to have um, giveaways every day starting today for the next uh, six days. We've had some great prizes given to us from the companies that Donna uses for her props. Today we're um, giving away the baby swing that Donna mentioned. I've already posted today's competition on our Facebook page. You simply need to go and find Donna's image, which you can't miss. It's the beautiful black and white shot you've seen tonight. Uh, you need to like that image, share it for us, please, and then post a comment on why you should win, and we will pick a winner. Um, tomorrow morning on that and then every day following we will post a new competition and a new prize from one of the suppliers that Donna's mentioned today. Um, so that's all up and running. All the links that have been posted out today that Donna's mentioned, I've also put a post on our Facebook page with all those links there for you also. Thanks Jay. Um, and, and Donna, thank, thank you so, so much for uh, getting those competition prizes. That That is a real bonus. We've never had um, one of our uh, uh, top uh, top talk webinar speakers kind of uh, provided his prize as well, so that's a well up one. So thank, uh, thanks very much for that. I was astonished. I was astonished at how generous the ladies were. So thanks to them. They've been great. Verity Isabella is one of my most used suppliers and uh, bespoke uniform props by Mary. Brilliant. Well, making, we'll making you things at a moment. Don't it? <laughs> we'll push them, push them. I promise. I promise you, kind of thing with it. Right. Let's get going with some questions. So, if the, if if you're yep. still okay for time, yeah. Uh, Jay, are you hearing yeah, a bit okay. of crackle on um, microphone, or is it me? Uh, no, I did, and I thought it was my headset, but it seems to have gone now. One one two two two. Donna, can you speak for us a second, just to check it's not you? Yeah, one, two, I think it's you, Donna. Could you just push your USB in again, just in case? Uh, it's come out or whatever. No, it's still pretty bad Bad there. Any ideas, Jay? Sure. Let's do the questions. Um, Jay, I'll, 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 I'll do some that we had in advance here first, if that's okay with you, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, okay, Donna, so what, what products do you find are the best sellers for you? Uh, the products, as in albums, that sort of thing, um, definitely the USBs, um, they will, you know, I put the USB in the top priced package um, and that's what they want, that's the, that's the, that's the thing they all come to intend to buy um, and I always make it my most expensive product. Uh, do you shoot older babies as well? Or photograph them, I should say, not shoot them. That's wrong. <laughs> uh, that, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Um, I I mark it for um, under 10 days old. That's what I prefer to do because it's easier. Um, it's, you know, you can have a shorter session shooting them at that stage. And I just think, I think I've educated my clients now, informed them that that's, that's when I shoot them. So that's all I really get offered. And when you're sourcing props and backgrounds, is there any special criteria that you use when selecting them? Uh, I'm not sure if people mean the, the backdrops or the blankets. The blankets and things, I would avoid anything that's very, very fluffy so that you know it doesn't shed over a baby. Um, obviously how it photographs, how it looks visually and um, safety as well, obviously maybe antique props and things like that, I would always make sure that there are no splinters, nails, things like that, that I'll maybe um, hurt baby at all. Do you have a, fav a favourite prop or a favourite background that you find that you use time after time after time? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I bought a piece of material in a fabric store um, oh, uh, probably more than a year ago now and it's hardly been off the, the, the backdrop stand. I just use it and use it and use it because I love it. The clients love it, and it just seems to go with almost everything. So you'll notice as you go through images that um, that that backdrop is used to death. <laughs> is that the Hessian kind of looking one? Yes. Yeah, yes, I love that. It looks brilliant. Yes. Um, okay, so if 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 you were coming into baby and newborn photography from uh, from scratch, uh, would you suggest uh, a kind of a basic start, um, a starter kit and start? You know, as far as props are concerned and backgrounds, any ideas? Uh, you would just need to keep it simple, I think. Um, and if if you're starting off, invite the, you, your clients to bring things with them, but um, you might have to be careful what they bring to you <laughs> because they, they can get very enthusiastic and I've had uh, hats and things that would fit a six month old arrive, but um, I think that's one thing to be mindful of as well when you're buying things. 
it's quite often worthwhile buying something more expensive, but it is scaled and fitted properly, like these ladies, you know, that have given us prizes. Um, there is no point in spending less money and having to buy 10 because it's not sized properly. It doesn't photograph well. It's a sort of cheaper yarn and it just doesn't look as nice. I think you're better to buy, buy better and buy once. Brilliant. Um, are there any photographers that you've drawn inspiration from, specifically in, in newborn? Specifically in newborn, when I had my own children, um, I was looking at Kelly Ryden and Tracy Raver. Um, obviously, years ago, we had Anne Geddes, where when we first seen opposed baby images coming forward. And now I just adore looking at babies, so I draw inspiration from everywhere. Um, but there are, are ladies who are you know, at the top of, of their industry, like Baby is Art. Um, mm. And Great. Jay, quest, questions from your end, from the live board? Uh, yes, we've got quite a few, so uh, well, I'll, I've answered as many as I can from what Don, Donna had taught me earlier on in today anyway, but we'll get through as many as we can now. Um, with regards to posing the baby, obviously they're very, very newborn. Are you ever afraid, you know, uh, do you find, what's the best way to handle a baby? Is it just care, patience and time? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, um, work with your ability, create a suitable environment, um, evoke love and emotion in the images, and, and keep mum calm as well. Uh, you're, I think the biggest thing is just um, avoiding them startling uh, and realising that they will have awake spells as well, and you might just have to, to take awake shots and, and you know, wait until they're sleepy again. No, Stop that's it. great, thanks. Yeah. Um, well, so, what I, sorry. When we, we've talked about today and obviously we've seen your images, um, are you working pro pro predominantly from your studio or do you do, do you visit your clients' homes as well? No, I'm studio-based. Um, I couldn't possibly take that whole room of props with me. <laughs> um, and things can change within a session quite quickly. No matter, you know, we can plan a session down to the finest detail, but I'm always guided by the baby, and the baby's in charge. So we might decide that, oh, we're going to use that bucket, but if baby's not, you know, willing to go into that position or whatever, we have to change plans, you know, there and then, and use something else or do something different. So I, I prefer to be studio-based because I can control the sound, the light, the temperature, and um, create this nice environment for parents to escape to as well. Brilliant, thanks. Um, do you have uh, any good soothing techniques that you find work best for you? Swaddling, I would say, um, for me, um, Sunday's baby was a perfect example where we um, baby just had a feed. If, if you read um, Tracy Hogg's book, she speaks about uh, the easy technique. So eat, activity, um, and sleep. And then the why was for you time for mum. But in our case, they sometimes eat and then they will want to be awake for a while. So we would, I observed baby doing this, she had her feed and then she was awake. And that, at that point, the parent was sort of trying to panic, you know, well, we're not going to get this baby back to sleep. And I said, no, we've got plenty of time, I'll prepare these props. And you look for the sleep cues and when you see her blinking, yawning, that's the time to get in and soothe her before she gets overtired. I think a lot of the chaos you hear in newborn sessions is perhaps when the baby has been jostled and, and, and jiggled so much that they have become overtired and they have no idea how to settle themselves. And at that point, if, if you swaddle a baby, more often than not, they'll fall asleep again. Uh, that's great. Uh, we've got we've got a lot of questions to get through, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whittle them down okay. a bit. So just uh, very quickly, um, Studio light or natural light or a combination? I, I do have some natural light in the studio, but I always use uh, flashlight and uh, I just prefer it for consistency. Uh, that's great. That's brilliant. That's answered that one for me. Um, and do you find that the flash uh, affects the baby's eyes and do you take any care or consideration over that? I will always watch um, the first couple of shots I do to, to make sure it isn't just a really sensitive baby. But more often than not, it is the shutter sound that can startle them rather than 
the flash. Obviously, I have the bleepers and everything on the flash is turned off because I don't need those. Um, I have had parents said, you know, does this flash damage baby's eyes? But um, baby's eyes are always closed. I, I'm not aware of any safety issue there. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, so, again, uh, again, we wouldn't have time to go into loads of it. Are you using predominantly uh, one, two, or three lights, or is it just the one main light? In the beginning, I made the big mistake of having lights everywhere and had the whole whole scene bleached out <laughs> in light. But now I just use one one uh, light head. Brilliant. That's that sorted as well. Okay. We're getting through these. Good. Um, so you talked about the sets, and we've seen the, the the amount of sets and props that you have. Do you aim to, you know, is there a set set of sort of uh, setups that you look for within a session, or do you just get what you can? No, I'll always set out with a plan. Um, I because I will have discussed with mum beforehand if she has any preferences or if she's bringing anything with her that she wants to include. Um, so we'll have a wish list, and we'll work towards that but it is completely flexible because it always depends on baby. Baby's in charge and I'll manage their expectations so that they know this is what we're going to try for, but it might or might not happen. Brilliant. Um, is there a particular time of day that you try to arrange your sessions for? Uh, I work evenings and weekends at the moment around my own family. Um, I prefer to shoot daytime and I usually try to shoot in the morning um, if possible. Um, and I, if I am shooting in the evening, it is just as successful. I might guide them. I won't set them in a panic about it, but I might say to them, you know, um, maybe give her a bath during the day, maybe keep her a little bit more wakeful so that um, she's more sleepy at night. Actually leads nicely on to my next question. Uh, I'm sure there are times where you don't get them to sleep. So do you, do you actually look to bring the client back or do you get what you can during the session and just... Uh, shoot with the eyes open. Uh, we get what we can during the session, but to be honest, the only time so far I've invited a client back was when she had a particularly settled baby, and I invited her back so we could do modeling, more modeling shots. Um, but I, if the, if there are spaces in the session where I sense that the parents are getting anxious about it, I'll say to them, you know. Don't worry if it doesn't happen today. We'll have you back, you know. But it hasn't had happened as yet. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, do you have a favourite lens or a lens that you use for your photography? A, a sat lens that you use each time? I, I shoot with a Canon 5D Mark II and a 50 millimeter 1.2 L, um, or the 1.4 L is just as just as good. Excellent, Brent. And um, okay, so this this one came on early when you were talking about that. Now you work by recommendations. How did what did you do before the recommendations started coming in? How did you get your business up and going? Uh, well, <laughs> I was expecting my sixth baby, so I was in amongst a lot of pregnant women. Um, but, so, but even before that, I think um, it's no secret, you know, in my local community that I love children and I love babies. So um, I started with local um, local uh, ladies. Um, in particular, there was one lady very kindly lent me my first set, set of twins. Um, and that, you know, every one you do leads to several more. Brilliant. That's great. Um, is there a way to deal with overprotective parents? I, I think... I've never really experienced it, to be quite honest. I think um, if you're reassuring and you prepare them, um, it's a difficult one because I've never really been in that situation, to be quite honest. Uh, I must make them feel really safe. <laughs> no, that's good. Well, there we go. I think well, I think we've got the gist of, of how you work tonight, so we're sure of that. Um, do you have uh, how many images would you would you like to be able to show us, a client, at the end of the session? What do you aim for? I aim for a minimum of 25 to 30, I'll say, but it is always more than that, I would say. Um, because like I say, the more I give them, um, the bigger chance there is that they're not going to be able to choose, and then they buy them all. Um, sometimes it is just small you know, variations between things, but yeah, that's how I work. Brilliant. Uh, looking at the props um, and talking, obviously, that uh, do, do the props get washed after every use? Uh, how does that work? 
the props are so well laid um, that by the time, you know, th there's never anything really lands on most of them. Um, but they are all washable, yeah, antibacterial wipes, I have them in the studio everywhere so that, you know, obviously we're keeping everything clean and every so often we have a, a really deep clean and, and clean everything, but uh, the hats and the headbands and things like that, headbands I don't tend to, to wash between every baby, just, you know, they're in on them just for a second, hats get washed when necessary. Um, and obviously, I always have a washing pile of anything that's been soiled, but it's mostly wraps, uh, blankets, um, the muslin cloths, because those are, you, once you have those big muzz, you will use them for everything. <laughs> All the mopping up. Excellent. Um, are the images that you show to the clients, are they all fully finished? Yes. Yeah. I never show anything that's not fully finished. Brilliant. Um, you talked earlier about relaxing sounds. Do you have anything particularly that you use for the baby? Relaxing sounds, uh, fight noise apps. There are there are hundreds of them on iTunes. Um, I just picked a particular one, um, and I don't know the name of it, but I do know that there is one um, from Safer Dreams. It is a, um, a white noise app. I actually know that, I'm just remembering the name of that one because it has a picture of, a, of my son on it because I worked with uh, the company to do some promotional work with them. But yeah, white noise, any any white noise app and I also vary the, the sounds. If, if that one sound isn't working for the baby, if, if it's not white noise that, that gets them to their calm, you know, sleepy place, try I have an air conditioning sound, I have a hoover sound, um, Doppler sounds and heartbeat sounds, womb sounds, that sort of thing. Uh, we're getting there, just a few left now, <laughs> so we're getting there. Um, I'm up there for time, I'm just aware that I must have, uh, have everyone no, bored. No, yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine, no, they're all still with us, it's brilliant, uh, we are getting there. Um, I've had a question in, how do you handle babies who still may have their umbilical cord? Most of them do because I um, photograph them under 10 days old. I'm quite surprised when we get a baby who's, you know, it has healed quite quickly and dropped off. But in the vast majority of the shots, it's not visible. Um, you know, they'll be on their tummy or they'll be, if they're su supine on their back, then you can hide it with their feet. Um, I ask the parents, when they because they always comment when they take off the nappy, oh, they've still got this horrible clip on, and I say, well, in most of the shots it won't be shown, but if it is visible, do you mind it being there? You know, um, I can edit it out if it is possible, um, but I think it looks nice, it shows how new she is, you know, um, and most people agree with me, but in the, in the vast majority of the shots it's easily hidden and it's not visible. Oh, that's brilliant, okay. Um, I think we're almost there. Uh, people are just asking, uh, what lights do you use, please, Donna? Uh, they're the very first ones I bought. Um, they are from Studio Flash. I think they're elemental uh, flash heads. They're 250 watt standard monoblocks um, with a big softbox. Nothing too fast. That's great. That, that was going to be my <laughs> next question. That was going to be my next question. Which power and what do you use? So you've answered that. Brilliant. Uh, we're pretty much there. I'm just going to ask you one last question that's come in. I kept this one. Do you find that most newborn baby photographers are women, or have you noticed a, a change in, with male photographers? No, I think there are more male, male photographers coming into it. I think the vast majority at the moment are probably women. It is dominated by women. But I think there are some brilliant male photographers uh, in the newborn industry now as well. Nice new perspective. Donna, thank you so, so much. What an absolutely fantastic night. And uh, Jay, thanks so much for doing all the question there. It's been an absolute pleasure. I know we've run to an hour and a half, and I'm sure we'll get <laughs> killed by many people and so on with it. We'll, we'll on your behalf, um, everybody's joy this day. Thank you so much, Donna. Uh, you have shown us so, so much more than we ever expected to, and that's why we've, we're here an hour and a half on with it. So thank you so, so much from myself and from Jay and the rest of the photographer ta uh, team and all the me members, thanks so much. I promise you I'll still keep nagging you to see if we can get to, fil uh, to film with you, whether we come up to you or you come down to us. We'll, we'll find some way, I promise, to actually show this amazing skill that this uh, 
uh, woman has with babies and I, I know other people have got the the term of baby whisper and so on but the way that you photograph little pe people it's just um, it's a special knack that you have and I can just hear from listening to you today the emotion that you must give off to the parents um, they're, they're guaranteed to buy they've got no uh, no option to buy because you're treating them and their child this precious newborn thing like the most precious thing on earth and uh, it is. <laughs> just list it they are I think but we forget this Donna as as photographers we can get into a, a neck syndrome with it and um, Donna, on, on behalf of me, I've, I've not only loved looking at your images, um, but I've loved hearing you speak as well with it. And uh, I know the girls in the office, they've all said, no offense, Mark, but you're not photographing our kids from now on. <laughs> I said... I look will... forward to seeing the triplets. <laughs> I promise you, I'm going to absolutely cringe when you see it. Um, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll be polite to me. But uh, again, that's the whole point of critique with it. And that's, you know, I, I, I enjoy this pushing forward and I enjoy new challenges. And, and if somebody says, do you want to have a go at this? I'm going to say yes. But like anything, yeah. I'm going to do a bit of research and kind of, you know, after 30 odd years of photographing kids anyway, you have a certain knack. Yeah. But triplets yeah. and identical ones, to say the least, was a completely new challenge for me, but um, I, I, I don't want to steal any of your thunder tonight because I'm telling you what, there's no way that I can do what you do. You have the patience of a saint, you have the eye of a very special photographer, and you have some exceptional talents there. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do the first thing I've ever done on a live webinar is a round, a round of applause. So uh, very, very well done. And uh, for those of you um, still online with us, uh, please go ahead and kind of whip over, uh, whip over to the Facebook page and kind of just leave some comments for Donna uh, as wh whether you want to enter the competition or not because Donna you are a special woman and a special photographer thank you so so much thank you very much pleasure um, Jay, Jay do you want to kind of just finish off on the um, competitions that Donna's arranged for us as well all these giveaways that we're going to have all week and so on have you got um, any more information on that uh, yeah, as I said, I've already posted tonight's uh, competition so you can win the baby swing. So please just go and find Donna's image and you'll see that I've posted on there uh, about the competition. You just need to like it, share it and let us know why you should win it and we'll choose a winner for that tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow then, Tuesday, we have a baby headband tie back set with a matching pearl bracelet from Verity Isabel and again I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be posting images every day asking you to like, share and comment and then you could win that. Wednesday we have some uh, we have a silk mohair newborn hat with a wrap from the bespoke newman, uh, newborn props by Mary, and then on Thursday we have a pack of the Big Muzz that uh, Donna talked about this evening from Big Muzz, um, and again all week just look for Donna's images and like, comment and share. Friday we'll have a stretch newborn wrap from Stretch Knit Wraps, and then on Saturday we have some newborn actions from Square Balloon. So as I said, all week just check out the Facebook page every day for a different image from Donna and then just like, share and comment. And again, uh, from me, I'd like to thank uh, Donna for her time tonight. All of the links that she's referred to I have posted on our Facebook page already tonight. Brilliant. Thank, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We've recorded, so fingers crossed you'll be able to watch this by the end of the week uh, and watch it time after time after time again. Again, on behalf of us all, thank you very much, Donna. Uh, we look forward to actually seeing uh, some more of your beautiful images going through our photo critiques and everything else uh, over, over the next few uh, months and so on. And uh, I think you've kind of got a lot of the top five places over the past year, have you not? Yeah, I think we've got a five in the yearbook so far. Brilliant, and the year look is uh, the yearbook, I should say, is looking amazing as well with it, which is what features all our members' work. That's that's going to be available um, at the end of the year, kind of thing. So watch out for that with it. Right, I'm just going to finish off with uh, again a quick commercial. Uh, remember that this week we've got two more webinars to go. Tomorrow at one o'clock, we're live at lunch with Loxley Color. Uh, Derek Moyes um, joining us again for some more L. Mel DP, and at Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we're joined all the way from a wonderful place. Are we Australia, Jay, or New, Ze uh, New Zealand? Uh, Australia. 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 
Yeah, live from Australia uh, with an amazing photographer uh, going to be discussing his black and white photography and so on. So please uh, come and join us. And uh, again, if you don't know where to get it from, if you haven't visited our Facebook page, literally just click on to the Photographer Academy, um, go on to the, work, uh, the workshops, and then you'll see actually all the kind of the registration links on that. And remember, as Jay was saying, uh, go ahead, jump onto our Photographer Academy face, the Facebook page and kind of share those images and kind of give us some comments and you can win one of those fantastic pride, pride prizes. That's it, guys. Thank you, Jay, for doing the questions. Thank, uh, thank you, Donna, for sharing so, so much of your one, uh, wonderful knowledge. And I just can't believe what you've done in such a short time. I'm on about in these years of photography. You are an absolutely incredible photographer so again round of applause from Mark, from Mark Claiborne not that I'm a fan <laughs> thank Good, you very much pleasure goodbye everybody have a great day